Matt Yasa here. Gonna try my hand at my magical crafting skills today. Gonna see if I can make a glass wand. Coming up. I put some water on my scoring tool. I'll go ahead and score a line in this very tiny tube. And then I'll rotate the tube away, give it a little bend, and snap. I'll go ahead and light the torch up with my glass candle. Uh, the secrets to that will be revealed in time. But for now, let's get started on this magic wand. And now as nerdy as this sounds, I was pretty excited to get my hands on these tiny tubes. And they probably don't have much use in most shops being so small. But I'm a big science fan, so I, I kind of want them for different tests and experiments. And this first one here is a lightweight multi-tube wand. And I'm just melting the tubes together on one end. And I'm just gonna have to pinch it closed in order to get them to all flow together. And this is to help even out the tubes, uh, to make sure that they all terminate at the same point. And then I'm gonna go in a little bit more, I'm gonna kind of form up a marble there at the end, kind of a focal point for the magic. And now I'm not sure if magic wands are safe for the kiln, uh, so I'll go ahead and bench cool this. I'm just rotating it out at the edge of the flame, and this allows it to stay warm. That way, as it's cooling, it's not as shocking for the piece. And next up, I have some slightly larger tubes. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare to turn them into round bottoms or simply vials. I went ahead and removed the end of it. I'll give it a little puff to turn it into a round bottom tube. And now smaller tubes like these with the thinner walls don't really need a killing process while you're working them. But there are a few tips you can do to prevent adding extra stress into the glass as it cools. Like one would be to hold your rods upward in a rack instead of laying them flat on the desk. And I'll be going more into that in another video. But let's get back to this round bottom tube. So earlier in the year, I made a tool making video that showed you how to make your own tools out of graphite. And I saved some of that graphite for an experiment just like this. So here it is. I'm going to start filling up this tube with it. Graphite is basically a repeating pattern of carbon. It's highly conductive. When layered out into a single molecule wide strip, you get what they call graphene. And now with it in there, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a whack. This just kind of helps it uh, fall more into place, kind of works the air out of it. And next I'll go ahead and try to clean up the top there a little bit and then fill it up with some clear glass frit. That way I don't end up heating up the graphite as I try to close it up. And now as I close this tube up, there is still a little bit of air trapped inside and that should be okay. The thing is that the air will want to expand a little bit quicker than the glass will when it's heated. So I'm working on a small area and going kind of slow. That way that the expanding air doesn't overwhelm the glass. And this wand does need a name. I'm thinking the wand of life. It is carbon after all. And for the other round bottom, I'll be doing iron or iron oxide at least. Like carbon, iron is extra conductive. It's also a bit heavier than carbon, and it can also be very easily magnetized. And now I bought this last year for the magnet apparatus video. That video shows you a magnetic field in kind of a three-dimensional way. I had some ideas to work on it some more and get some different results. But I went ahead and threw some gloves on. This got messy pretty quick. And I'm gonna fill it up with that clear frit and melt it down. So it was only a little bit after I started this project that I ended up getting commissioned to make a decorative glass wand for a Halloween costume. And that's pretty cool. I like when people uh, come to me and ask uh, to get something made. A lot of times there's a little bit of back and forth to figure out how to get it done. 
without knowing the process of glass blowing, my customers don't really know what can or can't be done. So sometimes we'll just kind of make up some ideas and work with it. And for this decorative wand, I, I can't remember who came up with the ideas to put lights in it, LEDs. I'm pretty sure it was me, but it's gonna be pretty cool. I've already been experimenting with the LEDs and it gave me an idea for a future video to do a homemade flashlight. It'll give me a chance to show you how to hook an LED up to a battery. And that last wand is done. I'm thinking maybe the magnet wand. I'm not sure what to call it. You can go ahead and suggest a name in the comments. But for this next one, I'm going to make it a lot thicker. I'm thinking a larger area or more mass might help it conduct the charge forces better. You might notice the rod that I'm connecting to has a large crack in the middle of it. To prevent it from getting worse or even exploding as it heats up, I went ahead and put it in the kiln and got it up to working temperature. And one thing I was planning to do after a couple more videos was to get my Etsy account going. And Etsy is kind of like an eBay or an Amazon, but for artists, it's a place where creative people can sell their work. And I've made my account, but currently there's nothing up there. And I apologize for that. And I'm thinking I might just to start list up a single item, maybe a pendant, a marble, maybe something like a lens. So being the same item, they're gonna have the same design, but they'll be a little bit different within themselves. It can be pretty hard to make multiple items perfectly similar by hand. You know, it's definitely more of a machine's job. So let me know what you would like to see down in the comment section. You know, a marble, a pendant, or just whatever else. But if you've liked what you've seen so far, make sure to go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. And while you're busy doing that, I'll go ahead and start heating up the rod, the end of it, and turning it into a big sphere. And this rod is 28 millimeters. It's a little bigger than an inch. I use it for lenses and large marbles. I'm gonna make sure to keep rotating while I put a lot of heat into it. And I'm holding it mostly level, a little bit towards the ceiling so that it'll slump down. And this can be a lengthy process, especially to make a large marble or to gather up a large piece of glass like this. Uh, I do cut it down and kind of speed things up for you. But I don't want to cut out too much. You know, it's kind of like telling a good story. You don't want to skip ahead and miss a lot of the details. And to make this marble, you could be using a marble mold here. It would speed things up a little bit, but I personally like to do it by hand. It uh, takes a little bit more time to do it this way, but it's kind of a relaxing process. It's something you kind of zone into. You might notice I watch it pretty intently as I move it about kind of angle it at different angles and kind of stop rotations at moments and go again. I'm just really focused on what I'm doing, you know, the process. I'm really in sync with it. And it reminds me of the uh, flow state in psychology. You know, it's pretty much that feeling of being in the zone where your surroundings and space and time just kind of melt away along with your ego, your sense of self. I mean, just it's a moment of just you and the process of what you're doing. So in this flow state, you just perform very well in your activity. And it's also a very therapeutic experience, kind of like a meditation. Now I need to let the orb cool off before I can put it in the kiln. And right here, it looks like it might be cool. But as I bring it under the desk, you'll see there's still quite a bit of glow left. And this is a good way to know if it's ready for the kiln or not. And here they are. They're looking pretty magical to me. I'm liking that image in the globe. And with that finished, it's ready to run the test. And there we go. The glass orb seems to be working. It's attracting the magical blue elixir. 
And now it doesn't seem to be working as well as the plastic rod. The type of material is important here. Some materials like to give off or donate extra electrons, while others like to take or steal electrons. So the best way to charge a material is to take one that wants to take electrons and rub it with one that's giving off electrons. So the material now will have extra electrons and be charged while the material you rubbed it with will have the opposite charge because it's missing electrons. So using two similar materials, like both materials that want to give electrons, you can't charge them together unless one of them is giving off much more than the other. Then in that case, they can exchange charge. So when something wants to give off electrons or donate, that would be positive, positively charged. And when something wants to take or steal electrons, that's negative, negatively charged. And a simple way to think about it is kind of like Velcro. You know, you have the two sides that only work when they're opposite. And for the electron, I would just imagine a little micromagnet, almost like these little beads of water flying around here. So I hope you enjoyed that positively charged video. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. And as always, have a great day.